I think one of the biggest issues in plasma cell dyscrasias is light chain amyloidosis. Light chain amyloidosis has an incidence approximately one fifth that of multiple myeloma. And so for every five myeloma patients you have in your practice, you actually should be seeing one patient with light chain amyloidosis. In reality, this is a grossly underdiagnosed disease. The statistics show that patients with cardiac AL amyloidosis have a median time from symptoms to diagnosis of 1.7 years. And this accounts for the fact that 30% of newly diagnosed amyloidosis patients die within the first six months of diagnosis. And this has not changed over a period of 30 years. The key points, I think, for hematologists and oncologists to keep the diagnosis of amyloidosis in mind. And by that, I mean, when you're following a patient with multiple myeloma, smoldering multiple myeloma, or monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, any atypical symptoms that aren't part of the myeloma triad, fatigue, unexplained, disproportionate to anemia, unexplained edema, progressive peripheral neuropathy, unexplained weight loss, should raise the question of amyloidosis. Every month I see patients who come for a second opinion on their monoclonal gammopathy or smoldering myeloma. They've been followed for 12 to 24 months by their local oncologist. The M protein is stable and they've evidenced no crab features, no hypercalcemia, no anemia, no bone disease, stable M protein, and they're reassured that they're doing fine. When their chief complaint is progressive intractable fatigue, unexplained weight loss, intractable edema, and none of those are CRAB criteria. So they're being looked at for CRAB criteria and the possibility of amyloidosis is being ignored. Currently median survival for amyloidosis is three years, median survival for myeloma is approaching eight years. And so amyloid is a far more morbid disease and it becomes critical for oncologists who follow patients with abnormal light chains or an M protein that aren't well. They don't have CRAB criteria because anemia is not part of, my, of uh, amyloid. Bone disease is not part of it. And conversely, when you look at myeloma patients, you're following for CRAB, so you may not be paying attention to edema or thopnia, progressive peripheral neuropathy. So keeping that in mind is critical because now we have so many new treatments available for the management of amyloidosis. A recent study has completed accrual, has not yet been released, but it compared a ortezomib-based combination with daratumumab ortezomib-based combination. And although it's impossible to know what those results are, I'd be willing to guess based on the known high response rates of amyloid to single agent daratumumab that daratumumab bortezomib combinations will become the next standard of care. And because treatment is increasingly effective, it becomes incipient on all oncologists to be sure they make the diagnosis early. And I think the big issue with amyloidosis isn't what's the treatment, because you can look that up and up to date. The real issue is recognition and not making a diagnostic error by assuming that all monoclonal gammopathies go on to multiple myeloma. In fact, when 20% of fungus patients develop multiple myeloma, 3% actually do develop amyloidosis. So it's just a diagnosis that needs to be kept in the back of your mind for your mugus and smolderers. We've recently looked at patients with amyloid peripheral neuropathy. The standard non-transplant treatment is bortezomib, but you all know bortezomib carries a significant risk of neurotoxicity. So in patients with amyloid neuropathy, giving them a bortezomib-based combination could be problematic because it may aggravate their primary symptom complex. And so we looked at this daratumumab for the initial therapy of AL amyloidosis. And what we found was that the response rates were very high and the outcomes and the depth of response was really quite impressive, suggesting that this is a unique place where bortezomib might safely be omitted from the treatment of amyloidosis.